Okay, uh, it's 2.10, uh, 2 so let's get started. Uh, my name is Chris Xie. Uh, the topic of, of my uh, today is uh, building AI words, uh, standardizing autonomous AI agents for decentralized uh, federals. So what is uh, decentralization? So decentralization often refers to a network of competing nodes that are, the, each node is both a client and a server. And there is no central server in this network. That is mostly what a decentralized network is. And uh, the character, characteristics of a decentralized network is mostly uh, using open protocols. Uh, the node is a, is a peer, meaning it's a client and server, no uh, central server. And uh, some key players, we can see Mastodon, uh, Matrix, uh, peer tube, and the values are pretty much like, you, you know, you control your own server because you can install your own, start your own server and uh, your own identity that provides your own uh, privacy. Uh, the current state of the AI in the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, Fediverse uh, agents, uh, some, there are some existing agent capabilities in the uh, PeerTube uh, Mastodon, but most of them are running in silos. Uh, they don't interoperate. So the, what we envision the future for, for standardized AI agent system uh, that are powered by our standardized uh, AI OS, uh, kind of like our current day Android, and uh, employs an uh, open and standardized platform that exhibits uh, the characteristics of a secure uh, security, privacy, and other uh, ethical considerations. Uh, the standard uh, architecture for the AI agent uh, network or framework uh, is categorized by modular design, uh, interoperable protocols, open protocols, and also standardized uh, kernel components. And uh, here is an example of that. So at the bottom, you can see uh, the uh, LLM interface. And there's an agent uh, runtime running on top of it. And there are some kernel services like a rag, uh, memory, planning, and action. And on top of that, there are some templates uh, that people can uh, compose different agents. And there's a composer. And on top of that, there's a yeah, command line interface or web interface. And uh, I found a uh, 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 personal agent uh, open source project that exhibits, that exhibits uh, this type of uh, characteristics. I want to do a quick demo so that we can know what we are talking about. So I have this thing, uh, this VS code running. Okay, and uh, I can restart the server, the, the agent. So when the agent launches, uh, you will uh, launch a web interface. And uh, I customized uh, this uh, agent. I call it, uh, I gave it a name called Anna. It's my personal uh, AI assistant. And uh, at the beginning, uh, I want this, whenever I start the agent, I want him, I want her to uh, uh, provide an inspirational uh, uh, statement. See in here at the beginning. As I provide a short, inspiring spiritual statement to lighten up my day based on the time zone uh, that I'm in, uh, in both English and uh, a local language. And then the agent, you know, is here, you can see there's a, a chain of thoughts that say, okay, the user has requested an inspirational spiritual statement based on a specific date and time. And I will need to determine the local language for this Central European summer time zone. And I will create a short inspiring statement in both English and the local language. 
and uses a knowledge tool here that is defined in the system. And he is asking the question of what is the local language for Central European summertime? He go and search. In this case, he's using the uh, perplexity.ai to search. And then he's got a response. So the local language for Euro Central European summertime varies by country with German, French, Italian, Spanish being some of the main languages. And eventually he come up with using uh, English and the German. So the English will be embrace the light within you for it guides your path and illuminates the world around you. And then also the German translation of that statement. So now we can try out some of the capabilities of this agent system. I prepared a few prompts uh, to test the text to action capability and the reflection capability. So I will say a couple of this question here. And I will paste it. I will say, hey, Anna, I'm speaking at Open Source Summit Europe AI conference. Can you please say a few words to spice up my audience in both English and the, and the language in my current time zone? So you go about and then uh, have a chain of thoughts as well. The user is speaking at this conference. Uh, I will create a short inspiring message. Now he's, he gives back this message. So that together we are not just building technology, we are shaping the future. Let's embrace the power of open source and AI to create a world where innovation knows no bound. So I will also create, uh, ask, him, ask her to convert it to a B3. Convert. So now it's trying to look for code to convert this text into an MP3. Okay. Is that too small? <laughs> oh, okay. So now he's trying to do that, try to convert it. For location, why is he asking for location? <laughs> Regular time, he doesn't ask for location. Now he's asking for location. I will say local file system. Okay, let's try uh, a different uh, prompt. So I have a local file. Um, that describe an agent called Aiden. And then I would like to the, the system to read the local file. Basically, it's a rack, a retrieval augmented uh, generation. So this, this file contains this one, which is, I don't know if you can see it. But basically, uh, it's a it's this, uh, hypothetical story, right? Once upon a time, in a world not so different from ours, there was a AI agent named Aiden. Aiden was uh, designed to assist humans in their daily tasks, making life easier and more efficient. So th basically this file describes the, uh, the agent. And then uh, we want the, uh, the Anna to, to see if, he, if she is able to read the file and then uh, tell me who Aiden is. So basically, you go out and then look for the code and to read this file. And after reading this file, it will uh, tell me who, who, who Aiden is. Now he is successful, read the file, and then he summarized. So Aiden is an AI agent designed to assist humans in their daily tasks. He created a platform to help people connect, share stories, and collaborate, and ultimately transforming the community by fostering friendships and connections. So you can see that this is a typical uh, RAG capability where the system is able to read your local information, uh, understand it, and then reply with you the feedback. So I want to know if this can convert.
now he is trying to convert this this text into an MP3, and then he go out and search the code, and then he found some problem. You see, I see he's running the code. There are some problems, and then he try to correct the problem. And he uses the code uh, execution tool uh, to convert it. So now, actually, uh, it is successfully created a file called AidenStory.mp3. And we can see if it's there. Uh, here we go. This is the file. We can play it. On a time, in a world not so different from ours, there was an eye agent named Aiden. Aiden was designed to assist humans in their daily tasks, making life easier and more efficient. With a friendly demeanor and a vast knowledge base, Aiden quickly became a beloved companion to many. One day, Aiden discovered a problem in the city. People were struggling to connect with one another. They were so busy with their lives that they had forgotten the importance of community. Aiden decided to take action. Using its advanced algorithms, Aiden created a platform where people could share their stories, talents, and ideas. The platform encouraged collaboration and fostered friendships. Slowly but surely, the city began to transform. People... You got the idea. So basically, you see, you can, this is from text to action. In this case, from a pure text to translate into the uh, MP3 files and then uh, play it. Right now, this system is running in a Docker image. So it is uh, constrained because you want it to be safe. You don't want to, this thing can actually damage our, our breathing system because you can do uh, a lot of things. So right now, the system is uh, uh, running in a Docker image. So that all these files are, are safe. So text to action, uh, the rag capability, there is also a chain of thoughts, uh, reasoning capability, and uh, planning. All of these are embedded in this very simple, small open source project. So that's my last one. Basically, co collaborate and join the effort. Uh, you can scan to connect with me if you are interested in further discussion. And also the, uh, the uh, AI OS uh, operating system stack is called um, Mossin. Uh, it's on GitHub. So people who are interested, uh, just you can connect with me or just we can uh, contribute uh, in this uh, GitHub repository. That's all for my talk. Thank you so much. Um, You have any question or discussion? You have time. I don't know who is the next Latin talk, but it looks like we have a free room. Yes. <laughs> so it still looks like in this demo, it's not connected to a Fediverse yet. Correct, because you're just running in a single Docker image on a local system. Uh, so what would it mean for you to extend it to the Fediverse? Yeah, this is an excellent question. The reason, because this system is really uh, very capable. Right now, it is running uh, on my laptop. But I could imagine in the future, this thing will be going into your uh, handset, your smartphones, uh, in your uh, wearable devices. Right now, I'm also, I'm also using the ChatGDP, uh, GDP01, something like that. And then it's, uh, in the future, this thing can also run in the local LLM. And uh, you know, this is totally, you can run it on the edge. And what I imagine in the future is that like a, a matrix or signal for that matter, we'll be able to have this thing built in in the Fediverse, and we're talking about Fediverse or decentralized agents, building in the system where they can handle your automatic, you know, uh, response to the messages or, or your scheduling. I was actually have another uh, prompt to to get them to. Uh, 
I assume like Anna is my uh, uh, executive assistant, and then she could uh, create uh, meeting minutes and create the uh, emails or uh, meeting invites. Um, I can tr uh, try that as well because sometimes it's not that stable because you know it's it's an open source project at this time. At this time. So in this case, you will go out and look for tools. And this case, you will look for the PHP software code and then try to execute that code in the Docker image. And then you will, maybe sometimes you will find errors and you will try to correct it as well. And eventually, um, sometimes, uh, quite often you will, you will be successful. In this case, actually he's creating uh, the, a separate uh, agent to handle other tasks. Now it's uh, successful now. Where is it? Oh. I should tell them to save it to a file. ICS file. So it is running again and then uh, trying to save the files. Now it's created, it looks like. So the email and the calendar event have been successfully saved. Let's see. Yes, see now we have two files. One is the email file. See here, you are invited to a meeting scheduled for tomorrow. And see if you got the calendar correct. It's about right, 10 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> this time, he's, she's done correct. Last time, she gave me the UTC time. But this time, he's gave me the correct uh, uh, time zone. So I guess the whole point is that this system is very, very uh, simple. It's not complicated. Because basically, the system, does, what it does is to uh, provide the prompt framework and then uh, make the backend uh, large language model because right now the large language models are very powerful. It has all the reasoning capability, has all the planning capability, chain of thoughts. All of this comes from the LLM, not for, from the system itself. What this thing does is basically give the correct prompt. It's more like a prompt engineering task. The whole system is defined by, by this file. Uh, the whole system. So that's why I was very amazed on this this uh, project. A prompts. You can see this one. Oh. So basically, this defines the rules of how uh, this agent zero works by leveraging the underlying large language model. It defines how the interfaces are, uh, what you send me back from the. Uh, 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 chat GDP or large language model and that's, that's how the, the, that's the basics so what that means is it's very open you can revamp the whole thing for a totally different purpose yes go ahead thank you so my question was around how easy is it to like add your own tools for the agent and, and how can we like scale it to like n number of tools that I have and yeah just just want to know like how in terms of operating it but also how easy it is is it to kind of uh, scale out to like a large number of tools yeah, this is an excellent question actually I built a tool just for the demo I built a tool myself like a greetings tool and that the one I showed you in the beginning that was the one I created so it was fairly straightforward as well to build a tool. Uh, and in this case, I built a greeting tool at the very beginning. I said, uh, provide a short, inspiring spiritual statement. And everything, whenever it, it starts up, it will execute this tool. And then it, it greets me, try to uh, uh, lighten up my, my day, for example. And uh, there are some, all these tools are also defined 
It's more like a configuration file. So you configure it, just follow the whatever they have already, and then create your own tools. Yeah, it is, everything is configurable. You just configure it, and then you just add it, and then you will have a new tool. Uh, so that gives you endless possibility. Plus, the, I think the, the other important, impressive thing about this is that this thing is running uh, in a, like a, whatever your computer can do, this thing can do. Because, it, you know, it goes out and then look for all this uh, code and then execute it on your local machine. In this case, in a container, a Docker image. So it's safe. And you can see all those things. He, he would just uh, run it and then create all these MP3 files and, and the other uh, files you specify. So you can see this now this thing is, uh, the possibilities are endless. So that's why I say, you know, this when we go to the uh, decentralized fedwars, you know, the, you can be, this can be embedded into any, uh, your no, any of your node. Your, if you start up your own matrix server in your home, for example, then you can build this thing in and then uh, automatically handle your request or, or, or routine work for you. You can define whatever you want uh, with that. Build your own rules so that you become your uh, digital twin in reality. And that's just one application on the personal assistant level. And you can apply this to any other tasks you want on your computer. Let's say any day, any day you want to open your computer, and this thing will pop up, it will just read your, uh, you know, your behavior, understand your behavior, your data, your, your, and then it give you planning for the day, or uh, some inspirational, maybe some new things, more creative stuff. And this, I think, turned out to be a genuine uh, personal assistant capability for you, I think. So, that, so the, the, the possibilities are endless. I'm just showcasing this so that I think Right now, there are so many uh, different uh, agent frameworks, uh, and then I feel that this could be a uh, uh, potential next generation, how we can apply uh, the large language models capabilities into real life uh, scenario applications. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this stuff. This is a very simple number of code. Not even code. It's, it's, is more description, more configuration. All the capabilities are built into the, um, the, the advancement of the large language model right now. So you don't have to do a lot of routing and uh, customizing uh, or, or, uh, of your own. And this thing can also uh, generate uh, their own sub-agents. So agent, agent zero can generate agent one, agent two for specific tasks. And this one can do that as well. Okay, I think I'm so much over time. <laughs> but thank you so much. And uh, feel free to, to connect. Thank you.